In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to calculate income elasticity of demand. First, I'm going to show you the background or how these equations are derived or the meaning behind them. And then I'm going to show you how to make some calculations. Up first is income elasticity of demand of a normal good. Along the x-axis, I put quantity of some good and up the y-axis or the vertical axis, the price of a good, and the demand curve. Imagine a individual consumer is at that price and that quantity. And again, we're talking about individual demand, not market demand. If the individual's income rises like that, demand will increase to shift out. The consumer still sees the same price right there. And that's important that they can buy all they want at that price, but quantity that they consume is increased. So quantity increases. I'm going to label this as Q2 for the second quantity and Q1 for the first quantity. I am concerned with the percent change in quantity demanded. That little triangle there means change, change in, and it's also the Greek symbol for delta. For those of you in a fraternity or sorority, you probably know that. I'm also interested in how income changes. So I calculate percent change in income, and I'm using y is equal to income. So what happens now is income rises, and I'll First income is Y1, and income goes up, it rises, to Y2. Y2 is my second income, and Y1 is my first income. Now I take the percent change in quantity, divided by the percent change in income. This is equal to the second quantity minus the first quantity divided by the first quantity. And let me show you on the graph. So it's Q2 minus the first quantity, Q1, and divided by that quantity. Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1. I now divide all that by the second income minus the first income divided by the first income. I know it seems more complicated than it is, but just hang in there. So the second income minus the first income divided by the first income. I have y2 minus y1 divided by y1. If I was actually going to calculate percent change, I'd multiply both these times 100. But the hundreds actually cancel out. So you won't see those written in your textbook. Sometimes I don't even mention this, but that's why they're not there. Now I am left with this equation, and this is the equation for income elasticity of demand. It is the percent change in quantity demand divided by the percent change in income. I'm going to make a calculation now for you. Imagine I have income and quantity. My income starts out as 100 and increases to 200, and quantity goes up from 20 to 40. So on the graph, it looks something like this. Again, individual demand. I have a price. Price doesn't really matter in this example. But my quantity is 20. My demand goes up because my income went up to 40. Now I'll make the calculations. I'll move that equation down right there. I take Q2, which is 40, minus Q1, which is 20, divided by Q1, which is 20. I divide all this by the incomes, which is 200, minus 100, the first income, divided by 100, the first income as well. This is equal to 40 minus 20, which is plus 20, which makes it a normal good. 
more about that later, divided by 20. Now I take all of this, and that turns out to be 200 minus 100, which is 100, divided by 100. This is equal to 1 divided by 1. So income elasticity of demand is equal to 1, which makes it a normal good because it's positive. Now I imagine that income goes up, but quantity goes down. Individual demand again, but individual demand goes down. I have a price and a quantity of 20. Income goes up and demand goes down like that, so demand drops to 10. For example, if your income goes up, you buy less bus tickets and less beans and, of course, less cheap beer. You buy expensive beer. This makes it a negative good or an inferior good. So let me make some calculations. So I have Q2, which is 10, minus Q1, which is 20, divided by the first quantity, which is 20. All this divided by 200 minus 100 divided by the first income, which is 100. This is equal to 10 minus 20, which is negative 10, makes it an inferior good, divided by 20. All this divided by 200 minus 100, which is 100, divided by 100. This equals to negative 0.5 divided by 1, or it's just simply negative 0.5, which makes it an inferior good. Income elasticity of demand is the percent change in quantity demand divided by percent change in income. So for an individual demand curve, I'll draw in price and some quantity, Q1. If income goes up and demand goes down, we call this an inferior good. And that big equation up there would be negative. The value would be negative. And now, let me put everything back. If income goes up, it rises, and demand goes up, and quantity increases, let's say in this case, Q1 to Q2, this is a normal good. And the sign of that big equation would be positive. If the sign is positive, normal good. If the sign of that equation is negative, it's an inferior good. If income goes down and quantity goes down, they move in the same direction, that's a normal good. If income goes down and quantity goes up, we consider that an inferior good. Income, so if income goes down and quantity goes in the same direction, so income and quantity go the same direction, we call that a normal good. If income goes up and quantity goes up, that's also a normal good. They move in the same direction. Now if Income goes down and quantity goes up. They move in opposite directions or inverse relationship. That is an inferior good. As always, make sure you share the knowledge, share the love. Find us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Questions, comments, suggestions below. And do not forget to subscribe right there. I'm always posting new videos, and good luck in your economics classes.